Welcome to the fascinating universe of stock market indexes, where numbers hold the key to a global financial narrative. Ever caught yourself wondering about the enigmatic S&P 500, Nasdaq, or Dow Jones flashing across news feeds or sparking conversations among investors? Get ready to dive into a journey that deciphers these cryptic acronyms, unveiling the secrets they hold. These indexes aren't just numerical codes. They're stories formed by economic shifts, market sentiments, and worldwide trends. You can think of them as a modern-day compass guiding us through the complicated landscape of investments, offering insights into economic health and financial opportunities. Join us as we unravel the mystery behind these indices, a modern-day language of finance that goes beyond the digits you see on your screen. We're about to decode the heartbeat of markets, exploring their significance and unveiling the potential they carry for savvy investors like you. So, fasten your seatbelts as we embark on a modern exploration into the world of stock market indices. Get ready for an adventure that translates complex financial data into actionable insights, empowering you to navigate the dynamic world of investments. Let's begin this exciting journey with master wealth into the beating heart of the financial world. S&P 500, Nasdaq, The VIX, Dow Jones. There's a lot of stock market indexes out there and you've probably either heard about them in the news or heard somebody talk about them at some point and just kind of felt a little confused and didn't really want to ask because you think everyone knows what it is. If you're not sure what a stock market index is and you kind of want to know how they work, then you've definitely landed on the right video. So, if you want to learn more about things like the 9 major stock market indexes that all investors need to know about, what goes into the calculation of an index, and most importantly, how you can use stock market indexes to make money, then keep watching. Stock market indexes are nothing more than a mathematical average that quickly tells you how the stock market is doing. We think that we overcomplicate things in our mind, especially when it's related to finance and investing. But we guarantee all of you are already familiar with indexes. For example, if you and 10 of your friends each weigh yourselves and you calculated the average weight of the entire group, that would be an index. And as your weights changed, the index would change too. Anything that's a calculated average of many different components can be considered an index. The S&P 500, which is the most widely used stock market index, is the average of the 500 largest US companies all rolled up into one easy-to-read average price. The level of the S&P 500 index is expressed as points. The S&P is up 10 points, it's down 10 points, for example. The real-time calculation of stock market indexes is a complementary service provided by major financial data companies. The name S&P 500 comes from Standard & Poor's, the company that officially created the index. And obviously, the 500 part of the name comes from the 500 companies in the index. Although there's a lot more than 500 stocks in the US, there's actually over 4,000. The S&P 500 is a pretty accurate barometer of how the overall US stock market is doing because all of the largest and most influential companies are part of the S&P 500 index. In the US, when you hear people say the market is up today, they're probably referring to the S&P 500. Not because S&P 500 index is the market, but because the index is a representative chunk of the market. Other countries have their own stock market indexes. Japan has the Nikkei 225, Brazil has the Ibo Vespa, the UK has the FTSE 100, and in Germany, there's the DAX. In Korea, there's also the Kospi, and so on and so forth. Just flip to the back of The Economist magazine and you'll find a comprehensive list of all the countries and their stock market indexes. 
If you want to know how the economy of a particular country is doing, you can just look at the stock market index for that country. Stock market growth and decline often go hand in hand with economic growth and decline. For example, Venezuela's economy has been falling apart under the regime of Nicolas Maduro and it shows in its stock market performance. Venezuela's stock market index, the IBVC, has gone down by 94% last year. There are nine major indexes that all investors need to know about. Following these indexes will keep you informed about the economy and, as a result, help you make smarter decisions with your money. Oh, and if you're liking this video so far, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Okay, so here are the top 9 indexes you need to know about. US corporations are very international and they play such a big role in global markets. So the S&P 500 is the most followed stock market index in the world. Then there is the Dow, which is short for Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the Dow is made up of the 30 largest companies in the US. Personally, we think the Dow is a bit redundant because it's 30 components and those are already included in the S&P 500 index. But a lot of people like to look at it as a very pure indicator of how the US stock market is doing. There's also the Nasdaq, which consists of over 3,000 stocks and has a heavy bias towards technology companies. If you're outside of the US, you'd want to follow the main stock market index in your country. For a more global perspective, the MSCI World Index covers all the major stocks across 23 developed countries. So this is often used as a barometer of the world economy as a whole. There's also the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, which covers the stock markets across 24 emerging market countries. So countries like Brazil, China, and India are all in this index. There are indexes for everything, not just stock markets. The S&P GSCI Commodity Index tracks commodities like oil, gold, silver, soybeans, corn, cotton, wheat, and even cattle. So if you want to know how a certain asset class has performed over the last few years, you can just look up the most widely used index for that asset class. For example, for a quick snapshot of real estate, you can look up the Dow Jones Real Estate Index. The dollar index is another super important index that tells you how strong the US dollar is relative to other major currencies like the Euro, Pound, Japanese Yen, and Canadian Dollar. Last but not least, you should also know about the VIX, also known as the Fear Index. The VIX gauges the level of fear present in the stock market by tracking the price levels of options, which are complex financial instruments used as insurance against disaster. When the financial crisis happened in 2008, the VIX packed from 18 to 79, and the S&P 500 dropped 20% over the same period. When the level of fear in the market rises, the VIX also rises. So far, we've covered what stock market indexes are, how they work, which ones you should know about. Now, let's talk about how you can use stock market indexes to make money. As great as they are, you can't actually invest in an index. So you can't invest in the S&P 500 index or any of the ones that we've talked about actually. That's because an index is just a mathematical average published by a financial data company. So, although you can't invest in an index, because that doesn't make sense, you can invest in an index fund. An index fund is an investment vehicle that mirrors an index. For example, you can invest in an S&P 500 index fund, such as the Fidelity 500 index fund or the Vanguard 500 index fund. This would immediately make you a part owner in all 500 companies in the index. If the S&P 500 index goes up 5%, your investment in the index fund also goes up 5%. And of course, the opposite is also true. If the S&P 500 goes down 5%, your investment in the index fund also goes down 5%. 
If you don't know how to pick stocks, then index funds are a great way to get started. Investing in index funds is a convenient way to basically own a piece of the entire economy. An S&P 500 index fund will have a lot of stocks in retail, construction, technology, healthcare, and a whole bunch of other industries. So when you're just getting started with investing, you have to decide whether you want to take a passive approach to investing and just buy index funds or if you want to take the active approach and learn how to select individual stocks. For more beginner-friendly info on stock investing, make sure you also check out more videos on the channel. There should be one popping up on your screen right now. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for new videos every week. Always remember to go out there and get it. Cheers!